Greetings and welcome to Tabloid Talk, brought to you by Tabloid TV, a show where we unpack the important stuff. I am your host, Mohammed Ismail. Like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below and the bell icon to ensure that you get a notification every time a new video is added. In today's show, we talk halal certification. There is a new kid on the block upsetting the apple cart with its free issuing of halal certificates. South Africa has three major certifying bodies peppered with several smaller ones across the country. As consumers would not want to be left with a bad taste in their mouths, the fledgling Islamic watchdog movement has taken it upon themselves to see to it that outlets claiming to be halal are fully compliant and all this they say they do it for free. Founded by Mohammed Mal, who has been the forerunner to ensure halal compliance and at the same time investigating and exposing fraudulent organizations fleecing communities, the Islamic watchdog movement recently added its halal division into the mix. How do they sustain the halal division through a free certification process when other bodies charge thousands of rands for a similar service? Tabloid Talk finds out more when I chat to the head of the halal division, Molana Mohammed Sandile Twala. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Welcome back to another edition of Tabloid Talk with me, Mohammed Ismail, sitting right here in our comfortable Durban North studios. Thank you for joining us. The South African halal industry has been a somewhat contentious one. Is halal certification important for Muslim-owned businesses? And why is it so costly to get such a certificate? Should the halal certification industry be a multi-million rand revenue churning one? Or should it simply be one that is of service to the community at large? One organization, the Islamic Watchdog Movement, has taken the industry to its next level by issuing free halal certification services, something that is not seen before in this country, and of course it is unprecedented. However, it has, come, it has not come without controversy or criticism. So what is different about the Islamic Watchdog Movement? We find out more today as we speak to the Islamic Watchdog Movement's Maulana Muhammad Sandile Twala of the Shari Advisory Board, who is himself, himself and activist. Maulana, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you for welcoming me and uh, to our beloved <coughs> listeners also and viewers. It took me a while to get you here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the halal certification industry is a bit of a contentious one as I said in my introduction, right? Why, why the issuing of free halal certificates now at this point? Uh, first <coughs> and foremost, I would, I would want to put it on record that uh, Speaking to a few uh, people that have called to, to ask me this question, um, sometimes, you know, uh, underground, and they have this question. I, I, I wanted to make them know that we didn't just sleep and wake up the next morning and, and think, you know what, let's start one free halal body. It's something that uh, our brother Muhammad, who is uh, the founder of the Islamic Watchdog Movement, uh, and I joined, you know, after some time uh, on the sh on a Shari capacity. So it's something that we've been discussing with him. And I always put it forward to him that, you know what, why don't, because I know that you, 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 you deal with halal inquiries. Because again, I'm going to mention, uh, in terms of, the hal of halal, we're not new in the game. Uh, we've been taking halal inquiries for, for a few years now. And uh, we've been taking inquiries on behalf of organizations because sometimes you'll find somebody wants an immediate response. It's a Saturday. They want a response of a, with regards to a certain item. But there is no platform of communication with organizations or institutions that deal with halal. So a person will put it on the Durban Muslims page, which is of the Islamic Watchdog Movement, and we will personally on their behalf do the inquiry with that particular organization if there's an inspection that needs to be done we'll do it and most of the time if not often the organization takes all the credit and we okay with that we we were doing it as a service so i put it forward to brother muhammad that why don't we look into working together with with halal bodies maybe a possible memorandum of understanding where we we work together with them because i feel they, they shouldn't be so many of them, because every year there's a new one coming. Uh, and each one has their own criteria. 
So it's like splitting the ummah uh, even more. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately with, for them, uh, there's a fee attached to it. So if there was one halal body and there's a fee, okay, fine. And now there's a few of them and each one is charging a fee. So what, what is happening to the limited resources? And I'm going to highlight this, limited resources of the ummah. What is happening to those resources? They're becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. So he said to me that, you know what, Mulana, I tried this. But there was resistance. <clears throat> each one wants to be, you know, this, they, they make this uh, <laughs> example of uh, too many chiefs. <laughs> uh, you know, so each one wants to be their own, on their own. So we tried. I personally, with Brother Muhammad, we, we tried to contact them. We told them that this is uh, what we wish to do. We want to have access to you. You have access to us. But you know what? We, we couldn't win. Then we were toying around with the idea of, of free halal because it, it started from the discussion that firstly, as a Muslim owner of a business. I own a business, I'm a Muslim, I manage my business. Do I really need halal certification? In fact, I was going to come to that point uh, a little later in the interview because I was going to ask you why is halal certification important for Muslim-owned businesses? But before we get to that, I just want to touch on Islamic watchdog movement itself. The name says a lot, mm. watchdog. And that's interesting in your name. How did that come about? And your guys' tasks at hand. I know you have been around to uh, various businesses where people have been putting up fraudulent certificates and claiming halal statuses and everything else. And you guys fit right into that role, smack bang, telling the community, Muslim community, hey, listen, this is not right, this is on. So you've also been targeted in, in that whole process. Sure. Mm. Uh, we were speaking, uh, <clears throat> I mean, with this name, I even, yeah. again, uh, I'm, 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 I, I, I'm, I wouldn't take the credit, obviously, I would give Brother Muhammad the credit because he's been the watchdog. You know, if, at first the watchdog was not, was not a movement, it was not an organization, it was an individual uh, who took on this task. Uh, and I remember uh, a few months ago we were sitting with one of the senior members of the community and he said, you know what, I had, had off uh, to you guys uh, because the, there was a vacuum uh, of watchdog <coughs> even though your name is like a scary one mm. because when people see us uh, they feel oh you know you need to run away but we we just human beings uh, we're not out there as like the p islamic policemen but ours is to educate so we go the education approach we don't just go there take somebody's information and put it on social media as the people might think there's processes before we even get to social media. Ours is to try by all means to safeguard the, the interest of the ummah and humanity at large. Because at the end of the day, we're not on our own. We do as the ummah asks and requests of us. Well, a halal certification is not just a certificate on the wall. It goes exactly. beyond that. So it goes to the ingredients that you use in the food. It goes to whatever products you have on your shelves. And it goes to consumerism, where you've got to be 100% accurate in what you're doing. So, so your organization obviously looks at all of, all of that in the process, and yet you're doing all of that for free. 100%. Uh, somebody, you know, you, 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 when you say free, you're speaking now of the cost factor. Uh, as an argument sake, somebody just said, you know what, you, you, you're talking about free halal certification. How are you gonna subs who's going to uh, subsidize this? Uh, I said, you know, unofficially, as the Islamic Watchdog Movement, we've been in the halal space. Unofficially, we were doing the work. Only when we, we said officially we're coming up as now a halal division, then everybody started. You spoke about, you know, halal not just being about the food part. I remember once, again, our, our job is... Our job is to sit around and be observant of what is happening around us. We were seated, around, uh, seated somewhere having a glass of water. So, and again, this is our job. So we're sitting, we're having a glass of water, and then my eye goes onto something strange where we see in a certain place 
that the staff members of a, an establishment that are changing outside the establishment. Now somebody is being is exposing themselves. It's it's not something good where you have your staff changing outside your establishment. Uh, if if human rights have to see something like this, it doesn't only become an issue for you, it becomes an issue for Muslim, for Muslims and Muslim business. And we don't need that. So as the watchdog, what do we do? Now this has nothing to do with the food, it has nothing to do with the halal. We approach this brother, we ask for a meeting with him, we ask who, who, who are you? Why are you coming to my shop? You told no. them you're the police? Yes. No, we're not police. We're not. Are you from human? Yeah, no, we're yeah. not from human rights. We're just <clears throat> your Muslim brothers. There's something that we saw that we feel it's not ethical of a Muslim to do of, or any other human because these are our sisters who are standing on the road. It doesn't give a good reflection. Somebody else has to see this is going to be a problem for your own Rosie. Could you please rectify it? So he mentions, but yeah, the thing is, uh, it has nothing to do with halal. He said, but it has to do with halal. Because you cannot be feeding people halal and abusing somebody else. So there's a chain of things. And it brings me to another example that I normally give to, to the guys that once I went to a halal conference or a, a workshop and an international guest uh, was giving an example of a certain place he was called to for halal certification because he's also in the halal space. And he said that everything was above board. But then this was a big company and he sees that the waste of this company goes into a certain pipeline. So he asked them, where does this pipeline lead to? And they tell him, no, it, it goes to a river. On his inspection, he finds that there's a certain village that uses this water for survival. So he says to them, I cannot, you all can get certification from elsewhere, but I'm not going to certify you. If you don't care about other human beings, I don't feel you should be fit to be an ambassador of Islam. Because halal is not just about business. Now people see it as a business. But halal is a sharia or a sharia uh, faculty or space or objective. It's one of the objectives of Sharia. It's, it's an Islamic principle, a very serious Islamic principle. So, so your work has been holistic in, in other words. It's, so you're going into a business and you're saying, are you abusing your staff? Are you wasting food when food can be repackaged? Are you polluting rivers? Are you polluting the atmosphere? Is, is that correct in what I'm saying? That's where you guys are looking at. What has community reaction been like? Firstly, business reaction to yourselves and community reaction. Have, have they been warm? Alhamdulillah, something that, something that um, makes us to continue with this. Because it's, again, it's not, it hasn't come without resistance. <laughs> There's a lot of resistance. Unfortunately, resistance is not from business. Resistance is not from the community. We've done a survey before we even launched on Facebook as to whether people are happy with how things are going in, in the halal space. And people are not happy. Once we introduce this, the community is happy. The business people are happy. The only people that are not happy and are uncomfortable are the halal institutions. We're going, to halal get, we're, going to get, we're going to get to that. An organization, any organization needs funds to survive. Sure. Islamic watchdog, whoever they might be. Right? You have administration costs. You've got to pay supervisors. And you, you, you've got to have an office that is up and running, rent, and all of that that goes into, into effect. But now if you're issuing or if you're doing a halal, a free halal certification service or a process in that manner, how are you surviving? A uh, very interesting question and very good question. And I feel it's, it's a question that everybody has been harping on. Uh, and many of them, some were genuine, genuinely wanted to know, uh, and many, uh, wanted to discredit uh, the intention behind this. And uh, I mentioned to a few, and I want to put it on record today, uh, to everybody, so we put it to bed. Mm. Uh, people should know that it's not an idea. Yes, the concern was from us, 
but the idea came from the public space, from the public domain. So we've had few interactions with some family members, some friends, and few people who came to us and said that, you know what, why don't you all go this route for the Muslim Ummah, provide this service? Because one is there are people who can afford, especially during the lockdown. Uh, we know the crisis that we face, not only in our country, in the world. Uh, and because people take halal as a business, and in business there are no friends, there is no brotherhood, it's just business. So whether your business is doing well or it's not doing well, I need to sustain my business, you need to pay me. If you don't pay me, then I will act as how a businessman acts, not as a Muslim acts. That a Mus as a Muslim, if somebody cannot pay me, what do I do as a Muslim? I grant them respite. That is the Islamic thing to do. But as a businessman, I need to be shrewd. So they approached us to say that, why don't you all go this route providing this service? There's widows out there. There are people who, who are old elderly people who want to have the halal certification, not because they need it. It's because, unfortunately, it's been made such that you need it. If you don't have it, nobody wants to buy from you because this, they, uh, what you call this institution, gave them uh, an instruction that if you certify you, you cannot buy from anybody else besides the person who's certified by us. So they close the market. And now, we, we, something that we mentioned to them that, you know what, this is going to come at, a, at, a, at an expense. And as the Islamic Watchdog Movement, we haven't started fundraising. We don't go fundraising on social media, asking for funds, even though people ask us to do that. But we, we, we've shied away from it so that people stop pointing finger and say, you're coming for our organization, so you're punting for yourself, or you, you are fundraising for yourself. But they came forward to say, don't worry, we are your well wishers. We will support what you all do. You all just give us the cost. It's something that we are going to support. And we don't even want to be mentioned that we, we, are, we are so and so. And we don't even want to own you as the Islamic Watchdog Movement. You all don't have to report to us. You don't have, we don't, you all don't have to take directive from us. We know the work, the good work that you do. And we support it. So, alhamdulillah, we've, we've been blessed in that manner that there are people from the Muslim Ummah who felt that this is a need and they want to support it. Hence, we, we, we are compelled or we cannot charge for it. So, in other words, you have opened the market. You have not restricting business people to say, if, like other organizations who you said, if we give you a certificate, you can only buy from these ones who are certified. So you've opened the market. In, and in that again, that is, that is again breaking. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to, to, to a bad word and seem like I'm bad mouthing certain people, but it's a monopoly. Uh, or it's, 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 like, it's like a cartel for a better, mm -hmm. uh, for, for a lack of a better word. Uh, and it's like you're messing with my business. Now, it's an example that I gave or we give to few business people that we meet. You, you got a certain item that you wish to, to, to sell or part of your business. And somebody else, another Muslim that you know, he might be your friend. And he says, I got access of this particular product and I'm selling it and it's 100% halal. And that person might be certified by somebody else also. But you cannot buy from them. If you buy from them, then the certificate is removed from you. You need to buy from our own suppliers. And we felt that that is not fair. But sometimes if a person doesn't have the money to spend, but they are forced to buy at a higher price just to retain that certificate, which we feel it's, it's not fair. In conclusion, uh, Molana, I just want to touch a little bit about unity in the halal industry in South Africa. And that's a controversial point, really. You've got like almost... Uh, several, I would say hundreds of certifying bodies sure. from province to province there's a different one then you get the, the, the national ones that sort of are the, at the top of everything else and then you get your guys coming in do you see at any point in time whether it's the near future or the distant future that all Muslims or all certifying 
bodies or all community-based organizations with one vision will come onto one platform and eventually you'll have only one national certifying body. Why is that not happening? Do you think something like that will happen ever? Uh, uh, <laughs> this, this is a... F I don't understand why you're laughing. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny one. Uh, as you see, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a young person. I'm a young alim. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say I'm new in the game. I know a few things. So i have speaking to a few senior ulama who've been in the halal industry for more than 50, 60 years. I did ask them this question. And they did say to me that we tried. We tried many a times that somebody opens up something. And many a times we find that the split happens most of the time when somebody was in a certain group and then they had a fallout. So this person has got this expertise. What do they do with it? So they open their own. And I am also going to close with this. And something that pained me was we were speaking to a senior person about this unity body or uniting the halal bodies to make it easy for the ummah because they've lost the plot. They feel they're now serving themselves rather than serving the ummah. So he just mentioned openly to us that, you know what, whether you like it or not, halal to me is a business. And if it's a business, the pie is big, everybody can eat. I don't know if that's a, a, mm -hmm. a, a, Durban, a <laughs> Durban phrase or a Durban saying, but where is the pie fitting in? What you mean by the pie is big, anybody can eat. And we even mentioned to a few people that we think thinking of going the free halal route. What do you think about it? And this is with, with halal authorities. And they mentioned you all can carry on. It's not going to affect us. We've got our loyal guys that support us. We're okay. We don't want to be uh, in partnership with anyone. So unfortunately, this, this is how it is. So you don't see any unity? I personally, I, I, would, love, I would love to see it. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't see. It. Let's hope so one day, inshallah. Maulana Jazakallah, thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure interviewing you. Barakallah fikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. There you have it, uh, the Islamic Watchdog Movement, what they do, the halal certification that is being done for free, and of course, the importance of every organization that needs to have, uh, uh, so rather, every uh, business that needs to have a halal certificate that says our products are halal, you are comfortable coming to our shop to buy. So stay tuned, we'll be right back right after this break. Thank you. And so the halal story goes. The industry is a contentious one and the Islamic watchdog movement has not been short of criticism and neither are they afraid of any confrontation. The organization is ostensibly turning things on its head with a growing number of queries daily. Their approach is almost unprecedented and welcomed by many. And we hope that this can be sustained in the long term. In our next show, we chat to world-renowned cartoonist and activist Nanda Subban, a man who tells his stories through his drawings. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest updates and like our Facebook page. Thank you for watching. I am Mohammed Ismail.